High School University, Act Three. Join us for another visit to a place where hearts beat most fiercely, where the love of today can mean the heartbreak of tomorrow. Welcome to Act Three of High School University. Listen closely for the words you need to know. When the word is used, you'll hear the organ play a note. When last we saw Laura, she was walking to her car with Tom, the editor of the school newspaper. Alberto, the star quarterback, was watching her closely, along with his pal, the water boy Elliot, who resolved to get Tom in trouble. Now. Laura's nemesis Sally, the weightlifting cheerleader, is lifting weights in the weight room when her friend and confidant Janet runs in. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. Sally, 30. you won't believe what I just saw. I can't wait, Janet. I've been on tenter hooks ever since the bell rang. Ponder this. I saw Laura walking to her car with Tom. Could you hear what they were saying? <laughs> I couldn't hear a word, but Tom looked like he was in Nirvana. He was grinning from ear to ear. So Tom saved Laura from meeting with Alberto. I bet he knew it all the time. You do? Sure. He gets to be Laura's. Salvation, because I can't beat her up now. Tom gets to play the bona fide hero to her damsel in distress. <laughs> we'll see what happens when Alberto gets hold of him. The fat is in the fire now. Tom will be down on his knees in supplication. Alberto is not going to touch him. How can you be so sure? Because I won't let him. If Tom has his eye on Laura, that's better for me. I want him and Laura to be together because it frustrates Alberto. You see what I mean? Pretty soon, Alberto will come crawling back to me, and I'll be sitting here <laughs> like Caesar's wife. Smiling my innocent smile, saying, "Laura, who?" I don't know what Alberto sees in her anyway. He's as stupid and <laughs> materialistic as any football player. Janet, he thinks Laura's rich. He sees her fancy car, her <laughs> lush clothes, and his eyes roll up in his head. Who does he think she is? He thinks she's the. <laughs> Scion of some millionaire, surrounded by <laughs> opulence, living the high life, wallowing in <laughs> decadence. <laughs> you sure have his number, Sally. I ought to. I went out with Alberto for three years. I watched him go through a scary <laughs> metamorphosis, Janet, from a dedicated football player into a. Kid who's just getting by on his raw talent, a would-be playboy. He tried to <laughs> indoctrinate me into that life. He found out pretty quick that he had the wrong girl. I'm dedicated to what I'm doing. If I have to live like an <laughs> ascetic to do it, I will. Nobody and nothing is going to distract me from my goal. You know, I really admire you, Sally. I've always been one of your <laughs> disciples, but I can't understand, with all your dedication, why you let Laura distract you from your goals. She's no threat to you. I'll tell you why. Because I come from a poor family, Janet, dirt poor, living sometimes in <laughs> destitution. I won't let any rich girl take away something that I think is rightfully mine. You mean Alberto? I mean Alberto. I mean my place on the cheerleading squad, and I mean as the number one woman at Nestor Snack High School, a bona fide big girl on campus. If you just ignored her, then nobody would even think about Laura. 
But by making so much noise about her, you have everyone checking her out. You make her more interesting. I think you should just forget about Laura. I can't, Janet. Why not? Because Laura and I are sisters separated at birth. <laughs> Who's there? I can't see you. It's me, Elliot. Tom. Oh, hi there. Running late, huh? How's the newspaper business? Elliot, what are you doing in Laura's locker? What? Oh, this. Is this Laura's locker? I thought it was mine, you know. It's dark in here. My glasses get so dirty sometimes. May I see what you've got under your jacket? What? Oh, that's my arm. My rib cage. The usual. Hey! I see. This is Laura's journal. Is that what it is? Uh, well, look, Tom, I confess. I was looking for some answers to a take-home test. I knew that Laura, she's a smart girl, as you can tell. I see you guys are getting something going. You really deserve it, Tom. Cut out the... <laughs> obsequious praise, Elliot. I'll keep this journal now. Oh, sure. What? This? <laughs> no problem. You mind telling me what you were looking for? I told you. Test answers. I'm a cheat. What can I say? I guess I ought to turn you in. No, don't do that. They'll throw me out. One more infraction. I'll do anything, Tom. Just tell me. I'll do my... <laughs> penance if you keep this quiet, okay? Okay. I have just the perfect penance for you, Elliot. Here's what I want you to do. What does Tom have in mind for Elliot's penance? Are Laura and Sally long-lost sisters? Will Alberto come crawling back? Stay tuned for more High School University. But first, let's review some words you heard. Words you need to know. I can't wait, Janet. I've been on tenterhooks ever since the bell rang. To be on tenterhooks is an idiom. It means to be in a state of suspense. Ponder this. I saw Laura walking to her car with Tom. To ponder is to consider carefully. I couldn't hear a word, but Tom looked like he was in nirvana. He was grinning from ear to ear. Nirvana means a heavenly place. He gets to be Laura's salvation because I can't beat her up now. Tom gets to play the bona fide hero to her damsel in distress. Salvation means deliverance from ruin. To be bona fide is to be genuine. <laughs> we'll see what happens when Alberto gets hold of him. The fat is in the fire now. Tom will be down on his knees in Supplication. The fat is in the fire is an idiom. It means the mischief is done. Supplication means earnest prayer. Pretty soon Alberto will come crawling back to me, and I'll be sitting here like Caesar's wife, smiling my innocent smile, saying, Laura, who? Like Caesar's wife is an idiom. It means to be above suspicion. He's as stupid and Materialistic as any football player, Janet. Materialistic means concerned with possessions. He sees her fancy car, her lush clothes, and his eyes roll up in his head. Lush means luxurious. He thinks she's the scion of some millionaire surrounded by opulence, living the high life, wallowing in decadence. A scion is a descendant or child. Opulence means wealth. Decadence is decay, usually moral decay. I watched him go through a scary metamorphosis, Janet, from a dedicated football player into a kid who's just getting by on his raw talent, a would-be playboy. A metamorphosis is a change. He tried to indoctrinate me into that life. He found out pretty quick that he had the wrong girl. To indoctrinate 
is to teach certain principles. I'm dedicated to what I'm doing. If I have to live like an ascetic to do it, I will. Nobody and nothing is going to distract me from my goal. An ascetic is one who practices self-denial. You know, I really admire you, Sally. I've always been one of your disciples. A disciple is a follower. I'll tell you why. Because I come from a poor family, Janet. Dirt poor. Living sometimes in destitution. Destitution means extreme poverty. Cut out the obsequious praise, Elliot. I'll keep this journal now. Obsequious means excessively or insincerely humble. I'll do anything, Tom. Just tell me. I'll do my penance if you keep this quiet, okay? Penance means atonement for sin or sins. Let's review once again the words you need to know. Only this time, you provide the definition. If you can, take out a piece of paper and a pencil. Otherwise, just say it to yourself. Use the pause button to take the time to get it right. Ready? Okay. Ponder. Nirvana. Salvation. Bonafide. Supplication. Materialistic. Lush. Scion. Opulence. Decadence. Metamorphosis. Indoctrinate. Ascetic. Disciple. Destitution. Obsequious. Penance. Let's review the idioms. On tenterhooks, the fat is in the fire. Like Caesar's wife. How did you do? If there were some words you weren't sure of, check the definitions in the booklet. Make a note of the words you missed and study them again. Once you have the confidence to use these words in their appropriate context, you are on your way to a better vocabulary and improved word power.